The following animation describes the all-in-one concept of payday Dr. Dr. Schwenzer Simmerer to close a bilateral cleft lip and palate. The patient shows a bilateral cleft lip and palate classification. In the preoperative phase, the lip tape helps to bring the premaxil into the right position. Especially in laughing, the tension of the tape presses the premaxil back into the cleft. Furthermore, the use of the palatal obturator contracts the defect of the hard and soft palate. The closure starts at the palate. The surgeon stands next to the cranium. That's where the perspective is turned to the overhead view. To get a better view of the palate, the neck is extended. During the operation, take care not to hurt the dental follicles, which are arranged directly under the mucosa. To block the bleeding during the operation, you can inject local anaesthetic, which contains adrenaline in a concentration of 1 to 100,000. The first incision is done along the former, in the middle of the cleft. With cauterization, the bleeding of the capillary can be stopped. Then continue to dissect the left and later the right palatial flap. For this you can use a dissection scissor with fine serrated edges and a sharp dissector. Dissect carefully the artery which supplies the palate. Same procedure on the right part of the palate. Start the dissection of the inferior nasal meatus to detach the skin from the palate and the former. This skin will close the nasal passage. And now for the suturing. On the left side the suture connects the nasal mucosa of the bony palate and the skin of the former. Therefore use a surgical triple knot which is hidden on the epithelium side of the mucosa. From the end of the bony palate the suture connects the edges of the nasal floor to the soft palate. The closure of the nasal interior is complete. Following the closure of the nasal floor, start with the preparation of the left muscles and in the later procedure, the right. First dissect the levator muscle. Then follows the dissection of the end of the palatoglossus and the palatopharyngeus muscle. Afterwards, the ends of the muscles can be sutured. Now the uvula can be formed. From the uvula starts the suture of the palatal mucosa. The flaps are connected in the middle and attached to the maxill bone. The palatal obturator is adapted again to cover the palatal wounds and avoid dead space underneath the palatal flaps. Completion of the palate closure. The surgeon works now from the side of the face. The view can be turned back again. The landmarks are set according to Ralph Millard's method. One, two and three mark the border of the familian. 1A and B and 2A and 3A will be located in front of 1, 2 and 3. Furthermore, connect 4 and 4A and also 5 and 5A.
The labial skin of the premaxil is lifted so that the closure of the sphincter can be embedded. Now tailor the upper part of the divided premaxil according to the landmarks to close the defect in between the cleft edges. Continue with the preparation of the sphincter muscle of the lip. The sphincter is closed with the well-known knot technique. Afterwards, the lower cleft edges can be sutured. After this, the upper cleft edges below the columella can be closed. Enlarge the nostril so that the columella can be extended according to Mulliken's technique. Detaching of the skin from the bridge of the nose for a better modelling of the tip. The nasal cartilage is detached. The nasal dome can be constructed by constricting and suturing the medial cartilage. After this, the remaining flap can be positioned into the small cleft. Concluding, the premaxillar nostrils can be sutured in position to finish the closure of the cleft. The results of the operation are optimal functionality of suction, swallow and sound formation. The child now develops normally.